Stephen, you heard Cheryl's words there, her explanation for why and why now. What's your read on this? Well, I, I think, you know, the surprise is why she stayed so long. Uh, you know, a lot of people thought that it would have happened earlier. It's not a big surprise that she's going on to something else. No one could say she cut and run when Facebook ran into troubles because she wrote it out um, long, long past the time some people thought she would. Uh, and uh, once the company changed its name and refocused on the metaverse, you could tell the clock was ticking. Sarah, what's your take? I mean, you know, in that interview, she, she talks about how, you know, we asked her, is she going to go back into business? Is, are we going to see her in politics someday? She said all of that is very unlikely. She really wants this time. She wants to work on her philanthropy. And still, never say never, but, you know, not something that we should expect to see her do. What do you think? Well, I think, you know, she wanted to leave Facebook in a in a good place likely and and it's really been a difficult time to find a good place to leave Facebook. It's a company in constant turmoil. They've they've had multiple scandals. Some of them, you know, Cheryl Sandberg contributed to through the company's grow at all costs, um, you know, advertising business, user growth, and then solving the problems after the fact. She she did try hard to make sure that. Um, Facebook could change it, the way the public sees it. The regulators could see it differently. But this is a company that you know is, is just such a big, powerful force and continues to have issues. And so uh, there was no bright horizon uh, moment for her to leave Facebook. She just had to make the call. And I think I think what she was saying about the transition to the metaverse that gives a little bit of a clean moment for her to say, like, listen, I. I built Facebook up to a nearly $120 billion business. It's time for the next era to begin, and, and that's not really the era that she needs to be a part of. Um, well, let's talk about that next era, Stephen. You know, obviously, Sheryl Sandberg did, um, for better or for worse, become the face of many of Facebook's controversies. I imagine it was difficult to find that good time to leave, and yet she is inarguably one of the most influential people in business today. How would you assess or explain her legacy? It, it's a complicated one. She came to, you know, you pointed out, Mark was only 23. Um, she was, you know, 38. She built a big business at Google um, and she changed Facebook's culture. When she got there, uh, it was still very much a, a dorm room flavored uh, kind of bro engineering based culture. And she knew how to build it out to something bigger, something more welcoming to a more diverse uh, group of employees. Um, she built up the business, the, the ad business. Um, you know, you could say that uh, maybe point a finger at her and saying the way she built it up was to build it up on personal data and targeted advertising. That was something that Cheryl really nurtured and delivered in a spectacular fashion to advertisers. Um, and then she was also in charge of the policy aspect of, of Facebook. And again, that's where they ran into a lot of trouble. And uh, again, I, you see, it's interesting that a few months ago, uh, that part of it was shifted uh, to Nick Clegg, who took over that part of the company's role, uh, which previously had been Cheryl's domain. And Nick uh, reports directly to Mark. Uh, and you know, so before that whole policy thing, the Washington, D.C. thing, which you think Cheryl would be uh, so adept at because she came from uh, D.C. she and Treasury, uh, that went to someone else. So again, one way for her to, to ease herself out of the company. So let's take a look at the next generation of Facebook leaders. Uh, Javi Olivan will take over as COO, but the role is, is being somewhat reconstituted. He won't oversee all of the things that, that Cheryl did in her iteration of chief operating officer. Obviously, there's Nick Clegg, uh, Chris Cox in, in product, Andrew Bosworth, chief technology officer. You just wrote a book. You interviewed uh, yeah. a lot of these people. And, 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 and I know, I know, I know exactly. them all. But, uh, What's your take? Yeah, I think well, the one person that people might not know very well is Holly. Javi, um, who came out of the growth organization. Uh, he was a lieutenant to uh, uh, Chamath uh, Polyhapatia, who was, you know, the, the, the 
growth at all costs lieutenant to, to Zuckerberg, who really drove the company, sometimes in dicey ways, uh, as it grew. And he gained trust and really has been very quietly one of the very top executives at Facebook slash Meta. Um, and I think you're going to learn more about him now. Of course, uh, Andrew Bosworth is, again, someone who's been with the company uh, since 2005, I think. Um, he helped launch the news feed. That, that's how far back he goes. Um, you know, also, in the, you didn't have any women, in, unfortunately, in, in that line there. But Naomi Gleit um, is someone who is in, the, in that inner circle, um, who, again, one of the earliest Facebook employees. So it's sort of striking that now as Meta faces its next big focus, its next challenge, the metaverse, the people behind it are people who have been with Mark Zuckerberg since the, almost the very beginning. Speaking of uh, women at Facebook, a number of you know, powerful women who came up in Facebook have left, quite frankly, Stephen Carolyn Everson, uh, Fiji Simo, who is now the CEO of Instacart. I actually had a chance to sit down with Fiji to ask her about Facebook's future, this pivot to the metaverse, her thought on whether or not this was a good idea. Take a listen to what she had to say. I personally don't love spending a ton of time in VR. I am incredibly motion sick, which would have been a very big problem if I had stayed at Facebook <laughs> to build the metaverse. You know, it's interesting, Stephen. I wonder if Cheryl had a moment of like, uh, you know, I've got to rewrite a, a whole new business plan, write a whole new business plan and, and how this all is going to work in the metaverse now. And that maybe a part of her just didn't want to do that, Stephen. What do you think? Yeah, well, I, I agree. When I when I saw the, the company change its name, I thought, finally, Cheryl has kind of an exit ramp. If you look at the history of, of, of Cheryl, I think she wanted to leave originally uh, after the company went public. But that really didn't go very well. Um, and it would have been a bad note to leave on. So she said, OK, let me wait till it, it all comes together. And then the next horrible thing that happened was her husband died. And, you know, um, that wasn't, you know, a good time you know, to leave. It wasn't a good time for her personally. And, you know, she leaned on Mark and, and the company to get her through that. And then came the 2016 election and all the troubles then. So, you know, she was sort of thwarted at every turn. Uh, when the senatorial post came up in California, a lot of people thought, well, that was something that Cheryl was waiting for. She wanted to go into politics. But again, she was in no position to do that. And also a lot of people thought that the person who took over that, uh, that that seat uh, was, you know, in line for that again. So Cheryl has had some pretty bad luck in terms of an exit ramp uh, from Facebook, but she only really wanted to stay for five years. That was her original <laughs> plan. And she told me that today that she thought this was a five year gig. And here she is 14 years later. I mean, Sarah, what is your level of, of confidence in the, the team that's left um, behind, if you will, or the, the team that's still there that's going to have to come up with this uh, business plan for the metaverse and obviously all the products that are going to make it come to life. Well, I was, when I think about Facebook and, and what Facebook has really invented over the course of, of its history, it's, it's this, this sort of very methodical strategy of growing, uh, growing to, in ways that, you know, a lot of other companies wouldn't have thought of, like making sure that there is no barrier to somebody using your product. And Javier Olivan, who is going to be the new COO of Facebook, was really the, the person spearheading that at Facebook for many years. He was in charge of growth, in charge of making sure that Facebook resonated in new markets. And I, I think that the fact that he's in the CEO position, it, it just means that Facebook needs the metaverse to work. That is their next bet um, because of the decay of their legacy platform. Facebook is is um, stagnating in terms of user growth. Instagram is, is struggling to keep up with TikTok. This is a really rough time um, for Facebook to not have a sure bet for its next 10 years. And by putting Javier in the driver's seat there on operations, um, they really are saying like, we want this to work.